Do you think I'd use this tactic and uh, be cheating? What in tarnation? <laughs> now I know who to look for. I'm I'm locked in, baby. Cheating. Well, I don't really want to deal with that again. Let me just reload. Cheater. Oh, heavens. Nearly knocked off my tassels. What if I what if I do this scouting strategy? Cheater. Today, like right now, actually, we are going to talk about those people in the FM community and football manager that belittle everybody and call uh, a lot of different things cheese or loopholes or, well, you're taking advantage of the game engine and we're not quite sure. We're going to address those people. And by the time we're done with this video, you are going to realize that the cheese is all around you. Those loopholes, you're just diving in and out of them the whole time. And that's just part of playing football manager. But first, an announcement. And the announcement isn't even to subscribe to the channel, which you can do anyways. It is that we are going to be doing another Saving Saves video. We're gonna turn it into a regular series on the channel. If you wanna be a part of the next one, subscribe to the Twitch down in the description, become part of the hammers. You get into the subscriber section of the Discord, which is boom! also down in the description. And you get in the subscriber section of the Discord, there will be a link to a sheet where you can submit your save. I will be picking the saves to save live on stream and then on YouTube from that list. So make sure you get yourself involved. And if a lot of those words sounded confusing to you, Google is your best friend for linking your Twitch account to the Discord account. There's a settings, connections. It's very easy, I promise. But bringing it around town, right here, we are talking about uh, a, a video essentially that I made uh, about a week and a half ago about a scouting trick where you could essentially subscribe to packages for a day and you would get the information of you know the entire world or however much that you had enough money to afford a month's fee in that one day and, and you'd be able to see a bunch of free agents add them to a short list and kind of play off that there was a debate going on in the comments of that video i released that got me thinking about making a video like this because the debate was is it cheating or is it not it was a binary choice and you had to be on one side or the other now while i was making this video looking incredibly studious and precise this is not something that crossed my mind at all but for the keyboard warriors on the other side of the argument that or saying it devalues the game uh, they all they they come in hot some of them very reasoned but some of them they come in hot right saying that i i'm essentially a sham for even teaching people how to do this well Here's the deal. Football Manager is designed to simulate real life. Football Manager is also not real life because despite my inflated self-confidence and an ego the size of the state of Montana, which if you don't know what the state of Montana looks like, it looks like this. And it's bigger than the entire UK where 35% of you are. So congratulations. There's just not enough geography lessons on the channel anymore. I really think we've started to lose that virtue. Anyways, despite my ego being the size of said state, I am fully aware that if you put me in charge of Bate in real life in Belarus, I would not be able to win the Champions League in nine years. There are a lot of obvious reasons for that. One, I don't know how to run a training session. Uh, two, I, I suck. But there are plenty of things you're able to do in the game that you're just essentially not able to do in real life. And what it boils down to is you making decisions for yourself, which ones you think are realistic or not. Because it's a game, who cares? But you're sitting there going, I think he's lying. I don't use any of that. He's making it up. I'm a real manager. But here's the first one and the obvious one is that, look, football manager is just not the type of game that's super competitive all the time. You have the answers. If you want to know them, you have them. The game comes with a pre-game editor. If you're on Steam, you click this drop down and go to tools. There's a pre-game editor here, which if you open and you know how to use, you can look up the ability and potential ability of every player in the game. You don't even need that. Even though that one's free, there's the in-game editor, which you buy for $5, which uh, now on the pre-game editor, there are young players with potential ranges. And of course, every region, they're also gonna be unknown to you in the pre-game editor. But if you buy the actual editor, you can see the potential and current ability of everybody in the world without scouting or anything. And that information is readily available. And you have to, whether you know it or not, 
resist the urge to look up this type of stuff in order to preserve the importance of the game. I mean, you have the end game editor and it's enabled during every save like it is for me so that I can do fun videos for you guys. You go to player search, you can edit search, the drop down. I like how I can't even find the drop down and the add condition. There's just like a hidden section. I can look up the current ability uh, and potential ability of everybody in the world at any time on my Twitch save right here with Oriental Dragon. I just don't because for me, this is in the category of the lines that I don't cross. But if you want to, that's fine. It's a game and you're playing it to have fun. There are other things like this. Like if you feel like you get completely screwed in a game and while a lot of people poo poo this on like the football manager Reddit and football manager Twitter, if you get completely screwed in a game, your young hot wonder kid tears his ACL and he's out for eight months, you pop in a cheeky reload. We lose this game in the cup. Well, we out XG'd him by five. That wasn't fair. Let's just hit one of those, shall we? How about a no? You don't even need the editor that I was talking about. There are third party editing sites that contribute to huge breaks in the game. So I never recommend using them. They contribute to like 90% of the problems and glitches that happen in the game for SI that they then ha have to go around and fix, at least according to my sources, which <laughs> it sounds legit. That stuff's available for free too. Like if you want to go out there and you want to just look up the ratings of players, you can do it through that too. And you can edit them. Ooh. There is also all over the internet, guides and lists of players for you to sign that, you know, in real life, you don't walk into the managerial room and go, well, this kid's gonna be exactly as good as Kevin De Bruyne because of his potential. So you should sign him. Now, obviously I can't imagine who would make videos like this or, you know, guides like this, but you know, since this is in the list of things that kind of ruins it for me a little bit, I definitely don't do it right, you know. Well, let's be honest, I usually start in such a low league that it honestly doesn't matter because these kids are all playing for great teams at the beginning of it anyways. But this is technically something that's just not available. I sit here and tell you because it's interesting to me that this dude's potential is 150 to 180. You know it's going to be in that range every time. Maybe this dude's potential we already know. Kai Osaka's potential's hard-coded into the game. I forgot it, but it is. <laughs> Actually, be a great chance for me to use the editor. His potential ability is... Hard-coded at 160, investigation complete. There are websites like FM Base that literally set up databases to test tactics. And if you're struggling, you can go and download a tactic that you know is going to work. That is 51% of the manager's entire job that you can just sidestep in Football Manager. Fun side note, my tactic for Oriental Dragon scored slightly above average. Let's go. And then, of course, there are obvious things like when you start a game, you can disable player attribute masking, this little tick box right here, which means you can see the exact ability in every phase of the game of every player in the world, which, ah, this isn't the section that is designed to convince the people that loopholes are just a part of the game and you get to decide for yourself how far you want to go with it to preserve the entertainment value. This next section, though, is is for those people. And we start with our boy from the last video, Jan. Jan? Uh, but that's mostly because this uh, well, game engine is not super, super realistic. So the match engine is not 100% realistic because there are certain things that work better than other things. And if you play the game a lot or you read stuff and watch these videos, you know that. You know what they are, how to take advantage of them. This is a loophole. You are not playing the game accurately. You have sullied your good name uh, and you are ruining the managerial experience for everybody. Or you're not. Then there's trials. If you watch my Twitch save with Oriental Dragon, I, <laughs> I've trialed 40 to 50 people at the same time. I bring in 30 guys at a time from China because we have to sign Chinese players. And I put, tw I literally take 25 of them turn them around at the airport and put them back on the plane. Now, who in God's green earth is paying for that? Because it's not me in the game. I'm not paying for it, but I can do it. Is that a game breaking loophole? Trial those players, the 40, 50 free agents at a time, you cut them almost immediately. Once you get a decent idea how good they are, essentially right when they walk onto the training field for the first time, is that whole process not grossly unrealistic, even though it is 
completely within the bounds of what's possible in the game. When you go to training, and this there are a lot of examples like this, and you go to coaches and edit coach assignments, which if you didn't know this was here, congratulations, we're working on more training videos for you. There is a workload at the bottom of each one, which is obviously a very abstract concept in real life of how hard your coaches are working that is boiled down into, they're working heavy today. We know we can, like this sort of stuff is not available in real life. Are you, you taking advantage of a loophole? Because you're, using the data the game provides that's kind of unrealistic there are other data points like this there's your locker room atmosphere your team cohesion your leadership support things that in real life are very sometimes difficult to discern and are only really obvious when they're super high or super low well that sort of information is readily available in data form and the same sort of stuff works with fitness it used to be a percentage and it's been changed to a heart to try and make it a little more realistic but still it's a better idea than real life and back to dynamics i can go through every player on my team and praise the conduct of every player in my team before a big match to boost the morale of the team while that would just be super weird to do in real life and those conversations all those interpersonal conversations with players are data driven you know the right answers to click if you play the game long enough to get the right response <laughs> I don't know how good you are with people, but I talk to my computer all day. So life is not that easy when I'm trying to get somebody to do what I want them to do. And then there's dealing with the board, which you can cheese the board to no end in a way that I do a lot of the time to go to keep a player that the board's trying to sell, where in real life, if the board wants to sell a player, they're gonna sell the player. Or they set a requirement, like you have to sign up, sign a bunch of Chinese players. I signed three of them. And then all of a sudden I've sold all three the next season, but they are still somehow satisfied with the number of Chinese signings, even though in real life, if I'm rolling out and starting 11 without a Chinese player in it, Shin Shi would have my head. And this is me just scratching the surface with like a barrage of information to point out that there are a million little moments and decisions in the game where you decide for yourself what is going to create the best enjoyment for you in Football Manager, which is, with the exception of the streamer showdown, really a single player game and experience and if it's a multiplayer game and experience you set rules and say well you can't trial this many people we can't use the scouts no downloading tactics you know you set those rules to create barriers so that you can get the most enjoyment out of it on a scale from you know the ease of success and the experience of realism but here's my charge to you as long as you disclose the terms under which you achieve something then Let's just stop bothering people about how they achieved it. If you reloaded once and you won the Champions League with Barnsley, I'm happy for you. If you downloaded a tactic and won the Champions League with Bate after I did it two years faster than I did it, I'm happy for you. Cool. We're all playing a game to have fun. It's time that we were aware that, look, I'm sorry, it's just never going to be that realistic, which is good because if it was realistic, we would all suck. And I'll leave you with that cheery note. See you in another video or on the streams. Zealand out. I just ran into my mic. Here we go. Oh, and one more thing. I I'm never going to make videos about like glitches in the game unless I'm telling SI to fix them. But yeah, I'm going to make things, uh, videos about things that you might think are cheesy, but they can help a lot of people enjoy the game. And that's kind of the point of the channel. Okay, I'll see you, see you later.